Welcome students to exercise 25, Laws of Logarithms. So basically looking at the different properties uh, that we can uh, have with logarithms. Uh, so their operations can be a little bit different than what we're used to. So let's say we have a logarithm, first law. We have a logarithm base a, so the base here is not that important. So the log of two things multiplied together, so log of a product. Okay, if we have a log of a product, we can actually break that down into the log a base a of m plus the log base a of n. So we call this a sum of logarithms. So this is called the product rule. So for example, if I had log base 2 of 6, I could actually break this apart to log base 2 of 2 times 3. Okay, so I could actually break this 6 up into two, a product of 2 times 3. And now, since I have a product, I can actually break this apart like I did here as a sum. So this would be equal to log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 3. All right, um, next one. So this is kind of related to the first one. If you have a product, you make a sum of logarithms. If you have a quotient, and maybe it helps if I put a bracket around here because this is the log of all that fraction here. Um, if you have a quotient, it becomes a subtraction. Um, so therefore, here we have log base x of x over 3. We could change this into the difference of log base x of 8 minus log base x of 3. All right. Uh, next one, third one. Again, these are all in your formula sheet. Uh, here, uh, this is called the power rule. Because here, it, when you ever have an exponent of the argument, so for example, log base a of the argument, which is m to the power of x, this x, this exponent, can now become the coefficient of the logarithm. So you can take this exponent and move it out in front, and it becomes x log a of m. So in this example, you have log base 3 of square root of 6. Well, this 6 here has an exponent of 1 half. So this would be equal to log base 3 of 6 to the power of a half. That's what the square root represents, right? And now what we can do with this is you can bring this exponent out front so it becomes 1 half log base 3 of 6. Okay, and the last one, um, this is to evaluate logarithms. So let's say you have a log of a base that you don't know. Um, you need, uh, you can actually change this expression to log of x divided by log of a. Um, so this would be base 10 and base 10. So log 7, or log base 2, 7, sorry. This would be equal to log 7, base 10, divided by log 2, base 10. Okay, so notice that something that's often misconstrued here is a lot of people see log of 7 over 2 as log 7 over log 2. That is not correct. Log 7 over 2, if you think about it, I'm not sure if I wrote it down here somewhere, I did not. So log 7 over 2, that is equal to log 7 minus log 2. Okay, and make sure you can see the difference. This is log 7 divided by log 2, so that would be this expression, right? And log 7 over 2, that would be 7 minus log 2. All right, so the log button on your calculator is a base of 10. So if you guys look in your calculator, you'll see that you have a log button. This is a base of 10 always. Therefore, this button can only be used to find solutions with question base 10. Okay, so you cannot punch in log base 2 of 7 on your calculator unless you change it to log 7 divided by log 2. <clears throat> so, uh, you must use the change of base law to convert this expression to base 10. So, you got to do that. And then, when you plug that into the calculator, you can solve that value. Okay, here's a couple examples. Uh, so, simplify this expression. So, I have to use the four log laws to simplify the expression. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these brackets here. So I'm going to expand this negative into both. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have 2 log x minus log y. And then here it becomes plus 1 third uh, log z. Okay, so now using my laws of exponents, I can bring this to as a power of x, I can bring this one-third as a power of z. 
So what I have is log x to the power of 2 minus log y plus log z to the power of 1 third. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put them all under the same log. So notice that in the subtraction, right, any term that was negative, those are going to become your denominators. So y is your denominator. Any terms that are positive, so this and this are positive, these terms are going to be your numerators. Because if I forgot this term in the middle here, log this plus log that, that would be a product of these two. So that'd be the first law and the second law. So when you bring all this together, what you're going to get is you're going to have log, one log, and you're going to have x squared times, this is multiplication, z to the power of one third, all that divided by y. So again, the negative term, right, the negative log goes to the bottom. You can kind of look at this as a negative exponent. And the positive terms go to the top. All right, next example. Well, it's basically the same example, just except I want to do the reverse. I have <clears throat> a logarithm that's simplified completely. I want to expand this expression. So I want to make it look like our original question in example one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out as all add addition or subtractions. So the, the a and the square root of c, those are numerators, so those are positive. The b squared and the d, those are denominators, so those will be negative. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to have log base a of a. Uh, plus log base a of square root of c minus log base a of b squared and minus log base a of d. Okay, so now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all the exponents out in front. So this has an exponent 1, exponent 1, nothing to do. This has an exponent a half. I'm going to move that in front. This has an exponent of 2. I'm going to move that in front. So what I'm going to have is log base a of a plus 1 half log base a of c minus 2 log base a of b minus log base a of d. And what we've done is we've completely expanded this expression. All right, simplify and evaluate the following expressions using laws of logarithms. So we can actually use laws of logarithms to evaluate something that normally we can't. Because 6 to the power of what gives us 8? I'm not sure. 6 to the power of what gives us 9? Again, not an exact value. 6 to the power of what gives us 2? Okay, so none of those are exact values, but if we can use our laws of logarithms, so for example, these two terms are positive, so there's a sum, uh, and therefore we can make that a product. And then this term is negative, so that it can be a quotient. So I can simplify all this to log base 6 of 8 times 9 divided by 2. Again, the positive terms are on the numerator. The negative term goes on the denominator. So what we have is log base 6 of 72 over 2. And we have log base 6 of 36. Well, this is an expression we should be able to evaluate on our own. If you think about it, 6 to the power of what gives us 36? Well, that would be 2, because 6 to the power of 2 gives us 36. So this expression is equal to 2. All right, do it again. Same idea. So again, brackets here. First thing I'm going to do is going to get rid of my brackets. So I'm going to get uh, 2 log base 2 of 12 minus log base 2 of 6 minus 1 third log base 2 of 27. Okay, so now I'm going to put the exponents up in front. So I'm going to make this exponent 2 and this exponent 1 third. So I'm going to have log base 2 of 12 to the power of 2 minus log base 2 of 6 uh, minus log base 2 of 27. Whoops, I'll erase that. Uh, 27 to the power of one third. Okay, so now what's 12 to the power of two? Well, that's 144. So I'm gonna I'm trying to evaluate this. So I'm gonna leave it as that 144. Get rid of the exponents. Log base two of six. Nothing to change here. And log base two of 27 to the one third. This is the cube root of 27, which is three. So we have minus log base two of three. 
Okay, well now I can, I'm pretty much at the exact same spot as I am here. I can multiply all the, the positive ones. Notice there's only one positive term, so this is my numerator. And then on the denominator, I'm going to have 6 times 3. So what we're going to have is log base 2 of 144 divided by 6 times 3. So the 6 and the 3 are both on the denominators. So this is 144 divided by 18. So might have to do a little bit of thinking there, but I, I believe that 144 divided by 18 is 8. So we have log base 2 of 8. And we're back kind of the same expression here. 6 to the power of 2 gives us 36. So 2 to the power of what gives us 8? Well, I hope you guys know that one. That's 3, as 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Okay, here, last example. Uh, a little bit different one. It's going to test your uh, skills of, of, of the log rules a little bit. So log base A of 2 is 0 0.3. Log base A of 3 is 0.48. Log base A of 5 is 0.7. So notice we don't know the value of A. All right, evaluate the following expressions. So with this information, I can actually evaluate log base A of 150. The way I'm going to be able to do that is I'm going to be able to break up 150 into factors of 2, 3, and 5. <clears throat> so to start, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I need to break out that 150 into factors 2, 3, and 5. Okay, well, um, let's start with that. So log base A of 150. Well, 150 is 2, so that'd be 2 times 75, times uh, 3, times 5, times 5. So there's the 2 times 75, that's 25 times 3 is 75. So this is the breakdown of 150. So now what I can do is I can actually rewrite this expression um, uh, written out as a product of, sorry, not a product, as a sum of logarithms. So this would be equal to log base A of 2 plus log base A of 3. And notice that we have 5 squared here. So you could say this would be log base A of 5 squared. And just to add one step to that, I can actually bring this 2 in front. So what I get is you get log base A of 2 plus log base A of 3 plus 2 log base A of 5. All right, well, notice that I know the value of log base, base A of 2. That's 0 0.3. I know the value of log base A of 3. That's 0 0.48. And I know the log base A of 5. That's 0 0.7. So what I have here is I have 0 0.3 plus 0 0.48 plus 2 times 0 0.7. So all I've done is I've broken this down into pieces of log base A, base 3, and, or sorry, base A2, base A3, base A5, and I'm able to replace their, uh, their placement by their value. And we add that up, so these two together, it's 0 0.78. The double of that is 1.4, so combined is 2.18. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. Maybe a little less uh, description for the next one. I think we can break it down. So notice that this is a square root. So this is the power of a half. So this would be equal to one half log base A of 10 divided by 3. So all I did was bring the exponent of a half in front. So that's the power rule. So now I can break the 10 into 2 times uh, 5. So we have one half log base A of 2 times 5 divided by 3. Okay, And again, so these two terms are positive because they're in the numerator. This term is negative because it's on the denominator. So what I get is 1 half of log base A of 2 plus log base A of, of 5. Sorry, the 5 is in the numerator. Minus log base A of 3. Again, I know those values. So I can replace them. I'm going to try to keep them on the board so you guys can see the values. So we have 1 half. So notice the 1 halves in front of everything, right? Because the 1 halves in front of all, the whole logarithm. So it's in front of all of them. So 1 half times 0 0.3 plus 
0 0.7 minus 0 0.48. Okay, and here it's just some calculations. So notice that 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7, that's 1. 1 minus 0 0.48, well, that's 0 0.52. And the half of that would be 0 0.26. All right, the last part, a little bit different question. Um, if I'm just taking one of the three values, I could have taken any three of them. Determine the value of A if we're presented with this equation. Well, this is simply an exponential equation of A to the power of 0 0.48 equals to 3, right? So exponential form, A base to the power of equals to the argument, 3. Okay, well, now to solve for A, so let's say I'm going to use an example. If you do x to the power of a half, uh, squared equals 4, what do you do? Well, you take the square root, right? You make this to the power of a half. <clears throat> and now, when you multiply those two together, you get to the power of 1. And then 4 to the power of a half, well, that's 2. Well, plus or minus if you want to get uh, technical. All right, well, here we're going to do the exact same thing, except it's 0 0.48. So to get an exponent of 1, what you guys need to do is make it to the power of 1 0, sorry, 1 over 0 0.48. So you put 3 to the power of 1 over 0 0.48, right? Because when you multiply 1.48 times 1 over 0 0.48, that gives us 1 now. And now, obviously, you need a calculator for this. And plugging stuff into your calculator, you go 3 to the power of 1 over 0 0.48, you get 9.862. 8 and I'll just stop there. Okay. Usually what we do is we usually have a base that's a whole number, but in this case, I could have rounded it to 10. Uh, I think uh, that's good enough for an explanation. All right, guys, good luck uh, on the laws of, ex of logarithms.